Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss the standards for attestation engagement. But first we need to know what is attestation in order to understand the attestation engagement. What does it mean to attest to something? Well, to attest to something means to bear a witness, to confirm, to authenticate, validate, verify. Well, we should be familiar with the term attestation because the traditional audit is a form of attestation. What are we doing when we perform a financial statement audit? Well, management make assertions, make claims about the financial statements, about the presentation of the financial statements, about the disclosure of the financial statements. Our job is to do what? Is to attest, is to attest to that claim. And we follow a criteria called GAP, and we follow tools that are called generally accepted auditing standards to find out whether those claims are as they claim to be. Now, since CPAs are trusted professional business people, many parties engage them to perform a variety of ad audit-like services. And this is where we bring in the attest services, the attestation services. A good example will be a bank request a CPA to issue a written report whether the client had adhered to all the requirement of the loan agreement. Simply put, we have three parties here. We have the CPA, we have the bank, and we have the client. So notice, the client is the client for the bank. The bank is engaging us to verify whether the client is in adherence with the loan requirement. Now, what do we do in order to perform this engagement? We have to review the loan agreement to find out what's the criteria for the engagement in order to issue an opinion, a finding, whatever we need to issue. Another example will be our website is reliable and secure. Someone is making a claim. Well, let's attest to it. Can we attest to it? So the standard for attestation and engagement are governed or they are issued by the AICPA, not PCAOB. So we are dealing with non-issuer. It's applicable to the preparation and issuance of attestation report for non-issuers. So what is an attestation? Well, an attestation engagement is an, either an examination, review, or agreed upon procedure. Now notice next to examination, I put opinion, because if you are engaged for an examination, you will issue an opinion. A review, a conclusion, an agreed upon procedure is a finding. Now bear in mind, we are going to cover examination, review, and agreed upon procedures much, much more in details, each in a separate recording. So don't worry about that. It's those engagement performed under the attestation standard related to subject matter and assertion that's the responsibility of another party. Notice the bank hired us. And they said, these are the criteria. Go ahead and tell me if this client is in compliance or not. Okay, so this the subject matter is the compliance here. Okay, so this is what we do. Now, in this session, what we're going to do, we're going to cover the common concept for the clarifying standard for the attestation. Simply put, in 2016, the standard for engagement attestation changed. And what we're going to do, we're going to go over the common concept today, which is the purpose, written assertions, precondition, acceptance and cont continuous guidance, documentation, practitioners, and responsible party responsibilities. Then in another session, we would look at the level service, such as enga examination engagement, review engagement, agreed upon procedure, subject matter, will include the prospective financial information, reporting on pro format, compliance, report on SOC and MDNA, and each one of those most likely will have its own recording. So we have a lot to go, but today, just to kind of give you what's going on, we're going to look at common concepts that apply to all attestation engagement. Now, before we start to discuss them, I would like to make a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required.
Starting with the purpose, and this applies to all attestation engagement. The purpose of an attestation engagement is to provide users of information with an opinion, if it's an examination, a review, a conclusion for a review, and finding for an agreed upon procedures about the reliability of subject matter or an assertion about the subject mat matter as measured by suitable criteria. Simply put, we're going to issue a report for, for the users about either a subject matter like the loan agreement or some sort of an assertion someone is making, some sort of a claim. This is basically the purpose of the attestation engagement. Now, bear in mind, no historical financial data. We're not working with the historical financial data because this is an audit. We're not doing an audit. It's a separate and an audit. And we're not using GAP as a criteria. So forget about GAP when we talk about attestation. Okay? Now, written assertions. Should the assertion be in written? Well, a written assertion is expected. Okay? When you are performing examination, review, or agreed upon procedure. It's good to have. Now, if you are performing an examination or a review, and if the, if the engaging party is the responsible party and refuses to provide a written assertion for an examination or review, no assurance without, without written assertion. Simply put, remember, we have three things that we can do. Examination, review, agreed upon procedures. If we are dealing with examination and reviews, and we're going to see why later, examinations and reviews, we are giving some sort of an assurance. For example, examination, we are giving the highest level of assurance, which is reasonable assurance. In review, we are giving a limited type of assurance. Nevertheless, we are giving some sort of an assurance. If the engagement party is the same as the responsible party, what does it mean, engagement party and responsible party? You remember our relationship, the CPA, we have the bank and we have the client, right? Now, the bank engaged us, the bank engaged us, and the bank g gave us the criteria, which is the loan agreement. But we could have an engagement party and the criteria could be issued by someone else using someone else's criteria. So if they are, they are the same, we will not perform an examination or a review without giving us a written representation because no assurance if it's not written because we're giving assurance. And we'll see what I mean by assurance later when we discuss examination and reviews. When the engaging party is not the responsible party and the responsible party refuses to provide a written assertion, well, that's fine. Disclose in the report. How would that work? Let's assume we are a CPA. We have the state of Pennsylvania and we have the Lehigh Valley Hospital. It's a hospital. Here's what's going to happen. The state of Pennsylvania or the federal government engage us to have an examination about the Lehigh Valley reimbursement process or uh, government reimbursement process within their insurance system. Okay, either the state of Pennsylvania or the federal government. So notice the engaging party, well, the reimbursement process, it's for, it's for the hospital, for the Lehigh Valley Hospital. So they're not the, they are not the engaging party. Lehigh Valley Hospital is not the engaging party. They're, well, who's the engaging party? The state of Pennsylvania. But they're using the criteria for the hospital. If that's the case, that's fine. We will go for it and we will disclose in the report and we have to restrict the report so we cannot have the report available. If it's agreed upon procedures, and we're going to learn more about agreed upon procedure, examination and review later, when the responsible party refuses to provide the written assertion, that's fine. Disclose in the report because by its nature, agreed upon procedures. It's agreed upon procedure between two parties. So look, you don't want to give me an assertion. I will give you a finding. It's between you and I. It's your problem because you're engaging me to say something. That's fine. I'm just going to disclose it in the report that you did not provide me with written assertions. Certain preconditions should exist for our attestation engagement. One, you must, the practitioner must be independent, generally speaking, unless required by law or regulation to perform the engagement. For example, good, good example will be the state of Pennsylvania, by law, they want to audit the hospitals. Well, by law, even though I may not be independent in terms of my relationship with Lehigh Valley Hospital, because Lehigh Valley Hospital is a client of mine, I audit their financial statements, it doesn't matter. I don't have to be independent if that engagement is required by law. But generally speaking, you have to be independent. Just know there is an except, exception. The responsible party must take responsibility for the subject matter. Of course, whoever the responsible party is should take, should take responsibility for the subject matter. And also, we have to have four additional characteristics. 
to have an attestation engagement. The subject matter is appropriate. Well, the subject, we'll, we're going to talk about what subject matter is appropriate is. The criteria is suitable and available. We can measure it. The criteria, and we'll, we'll talk about the criteria a little bit more in a moment. You must issue a report, and that report could be an opinion, finding, or, or conclusion, depending on the engagement, and the report must be in written. Now, what do we mean by subject matter is appropriate? Okay, subject matter is appropriate. It means capable of consistent measurement. So if I am if I am if I am measuring the reimbursement process of Lehigh Valley Hospital, I should be able to do it because it's consistent. I can see what's going on. They have internal control. They have certain procedures. I can gather appropriate evidence in order to support it to support my either opinion, conclusion, or findings. If the subject matter is not appropriate for an examination, it's not appropriate for a review. Just know that. What is suitable criteria? Remember, it has to be appropriate. It has to have suitable criteria. It has to, it has to be relevant to the subject matter. The criteria has to be relevant. They are free from bias. They are not favoring, for example, the state versus the hospital or the hospital versus the state. They allow reasonable, consistent measurement slash evaluation. I can see this. I can see the process consistently being applied again and again, year after year, month after month for, for different customers the same way. And... I don't emit any relevant factors in my uh, in those criteria. Now, if the criteria is established by the AICPA, because the AICPA will have many criteria for, for attestation engagement, we could always assume it's suitable because they set the rules. If a criteria is not suitable for an examination, not suitable for a review. If the criteria is so specialized to a specified party, then you would restrict the report because you don't want to issue a report about some special specialized knowledge to the general public acceptance and continuance so when you are engaging in attestation you have to have a quality control for your firm practitioners should determine if they should accept and continue an engagement for example somebody might engage them in for environmental law engagement if they don't have this if they don't have the specialist on staff they should reviews either don't take or hire a specialist now if you hire a specialist evaluate their competence competency and independence have a mutual understanding about the scope and timing of the of their work. Review their work for the purpose of the engagement because your name is going on that letter. Then decide whether you want to mention them or not in the report. Anyhow, you are responsible for them. How about documentation? Well, you should have a file ready 60 days after you complete the report. No document should be deleted or get rid of till the end of the retention period. Now, what is the retention period? Well, the retention period should be sufficient to meet the need of any legal or regulatory environment. So, because different engagement will have in different states and different counties, they will have different legal requirements. Make sure your retention policy for those documents comply with this. So, no, make sure you know what they are. There's no specific rules. If you add any documents to the working file after the 60 day period, you want to justify it and make sure you initial why and by whom. Okay. Practitioners should also practice reasonable measure to protect the confidentiality of the file. Okay, that's also required. What guidance or what guidance we should use? There are two categories of professional requirement on the statement of attestation. There, one is unconditional requirement. Those unconditional requirements, you should always comply with them. And the word must is a good indicator in the literature. If, the, if it says you must do it, then you must do it in all circumstances. Then some are presumptively mandatory requirement. Those, if it's a presumptively, as long as you can find alternative procedures, to it's acceptable to meet the spirit of the requirement. And those procedures will have the word should as an, indica as an, as an indicator that it's a presumptively mandatory requirement. You should do it. If not, find a procedure to do it. Now, other resources for guidance, you can use the appendices of the SSAE, of the AICPA, and those would would have should have words like may, might, or could, and you could you could use those as additional explanation or examples for the appropriate procedures. That's also an acceptable guidance. You could also look at other publication, interpretive publication, or attestation publication. Those are recommended but not required. Uh, before the auditing standard board had the opportunity to comment and validate them or not. Now, we spoke about the responsible party and we discussed it. The responsible party, usually the management, but it doesn't have to be for the subject matter as well as the assertion of the subject matter. It doesn't have to be, but usually it is. 
It pr should provide the responsible party should provide the practitioner with access to all the information that's relevant for the measurement, evaluation, and disclosure. If you're engaging me, if you're the responsible party, I need the information to be able to make, to, to issue an opinion or a conclusion or a finding. I need to have access to all necessary information. And I need unrestricted access to people that I can talk to if need be in order to obtain the evidence. The practitioner's responsibility responsible for complying with relevant performance and reporting requirement established in the attestation standard that's a giving they're also responsible for having appropriate competence and capable people in performing the engagement how make sure they comply with relevant ethical requirement maintain professional skepticism at all time and exercise professional skepticism throughout the planned throughout the planning and the performance of the engagement make sure you have an objective opinion now this is an introduction to attestation engagement next i'm going to be covering examination review agreed upon procedures then i'm going to cover more in details different type of procedures whether it's an mdna whether it's pro forma financial statement so on and so forth so we have a lot to go in these sessions but this is an important topic for the cpa exam as well as your accounting courses go to farhat lectures and start to do work M mcqs through false that's going to help you understand this topic good luck study hard and stay safe